for that little tiny delay there. Something's going on with camera one, the front facing camera. It happens every now and again. It just unfortunately happened right when we clicked on air for the live today. Um, I'll wait and chit chat a little bit and let some people trickle in, but it is so good to see you all bright and early on this Monday. I hope you all are doing well, feeling well, having a good, um, having a good, I hope you had a good weekend. It is October the 3rd. I can't even believe it's already October. I th is this the first? Yeah, so this is the first live we've done in October. What about that? It's October. It's officially like spooky season. Uh, do you all decorate for Halloween your house? Do you all have Halloween parties? Uh, we used to have a Halloween party when I was growing up, and boy, howdy, it was fun. We used to... Um, Either have one or go to one. I think I threw one once or twice. It was fun. But let me know how you guys are doing. Uh, if you are not familiar with me, hello and welcome. I am an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb. And the voice you'll hear today, unlike normal, which is usually Miss Becca, is actually my husband, James. So James is here today. Uh, Becca and Anna and our other friend Julie are off having a wonderful little girls trip. They're in Waco, Texas, enjoying some time with themselves. So I hope they're having a great time. So this week you're going to see me and James. And I'm sorry that the lives are going to be um, not our usual times or not our usual days. But when, uh, when there's only one Oak and Lamb person here, sometimes some things get a little bit shifted around. So thank you guys so much for being so flexible. I appreciate it. Good morning. Happy to be here on this beautiful Monday with you. Danielle, we're so glad that you're here too. Good morning, Rachel, tuning in from Maine. Oh, Beth, what time is it in Maine? Let me know. Hi from the UK. Hi, Debbie. It looks like we're getting some friends in different time zones since we're live a little bit earlier today, which is super fun. I love having a new crowd with us. Today, we're gonna to be talking about all things ceiling. And I, I have talking points, I have written some down, but I hope to get some really excellent questions from you all. I have been cricketing uh, for over six years now with my machine here, and I've sealed a lot of projects with a lot of different products. I have put them in the dishwasher, I have hand washed them, I have uh, put them through the ringer, left them out in my car, uh, left on my car when it was freezing, when it was super hot. I've done a lot with all these different types of sealers, not testing, but thinking they'll just kind of work great. And a lot of them don't. So today we're gonna be talking about sealing your Cricut projects, what you can use to seal them, if you should seal them, some things you can do to prevent the, your sealer from coming off of your blank item that you have. Uh, let me see here. Can we start with the Charlie fix? Christina, my mom actually um, offered to babysit this morning. So Charlie is at home and my mom came over and has Charlie. I do think he is sleeping though because he was red eyed and rubbing his eyes before we left and I knew he was probably ready for a little nap. But thanks for asking Christina. He will be here probably tomorrow and Wednesday though uh, in the private Facebook group. So if you want your Charlie fix, I think you're gonna get one this week for sure. Thanks though. Um, it's 10.04 Beth, okay. Mary, hello. Hi, Phyllis, Jody. Oh my gosh, hi everyone. I'm seeing some different names. I love this time because I get to see some different names I don't usually see. So today is gonna be the opportunity for you all to ask your questions about sealing vinyl. Um, there's a lot to go over, so we're just gonna dive on into it. Whether you're using um, vinyl on a piece of wood for an outdoor sign or a wine glass that you're going to use for your next girl's night. There's always things that you all are going to be thinking about as far as how long will that vinyl last on the project. So let's take it down to the basics. I'm just going to kind of skip an hour's worth of rambling. You do not have to seal your projects. I truly believe that sealing your projects doesn't make it last longer per se. I also think it cheapens the look of your projects. I know, I'm sorry, it's true. Now the very small 
um, exceptions to this are things like glitter tumblers and that sort of thing that need to be sealed with UV resin. That, that's kind of different. Um, but sealing as far as like on a wine glass, like I have an example here, I'll show you on the overhead camera soon. You should not be sealing anything that is clear, anything that is glass, that is a uh, mirror. You don't want to seal anything like that because it will be cloudy, it'll show streaks. Now, if you're talking about an outdoor sign, like on wood, there are some options for things like that because the wood is not going to show the brush strokes quite like anything glass or plastic, clear, see-through, anything like that would show. I personally choose not to seal a lot of my vinyl projects. However, I do sometimes seal wood if it's going to go outside. So painted wood and things like that. Uh, so sealing projects, this is not just for... Um, vinyl the title says vinyl projects but if you guys have questions about other types of things i'm happy to answer that as well so again a couple of basics make sure that you're using a good quality blank if you're going to be using an adhesive vinyl on it you want it smooth you want it flat and you want it if possible slick like you know really really slick like glasses so that is what's going to grip your adhesive vinyl the best it's going to stay on there a long time if you have a wine glass and you put some adhesive vinyl lettering on there you don't really have to seal it hand wash it and you should be good to go now make sure that when you're using vinyl for things like that your letters are also a bit bolder a bit thicker the thicker and bolder your letters are the more adhesive is underneath that letter to be able to adhere onto your wine glass and make a really nice tight seal for months and months of use. If you have really thin little, um, you know, scripty line work on here, that's not a lot of adhesive underneath that vinyl, which means it's probably gonna have the water come underneath there and peel it up a little bit quicker. So think about things like that when you're wanting to seal your projects as well. I use a paint roller to seal my outdoor wood signs. That's a great idea. Stacy, that is a great idea. That is going to be something that we're also going to talk about, which is uh, brushes and rollers and things like that, because there is a lot of do's and don'ts when it comes to trying to get a nice flat look without your brush strokes or anything like that. And it matters a whole lot, as I'm sure that you know. So make sure that you're using a very good quality vinyl. If you are trying to seal something like a Starbucks cup that is a little bit um, squishy, I say squishy, but you guys know what I mean. It's like, like a thin plastic, so you can bend it a little bit. You have to take into account that bend. That bend is why I would not seal vinyl on this. If you use spray polycrylic, it's going to dry, and it's going to dry a little bit hard. Plus, spray, spray polycrylic has a really hard time getting a nice even coat. Uh, if you would spray that, it will harden up, and as soon as you bend this cup, it's going to crack. Same thing with the brush-on polyurethane. Same thing. Um, now, resin, UV resin or AB part resin, it is not going to do that. So if you wanted to seal, it will uh, seal and cure hard and kind of just harden up the cup to where you kind of can't bend it unless you really force your hand and bend it. In that case, why would you do that? Uh, Mod Podge are no-nos for sealing things on cups because... They're water-based, which means if you were to seal this entire cup with some vinyl on it, use it for a drink or something and want to throw it in your dishwasher or rinse it under the water, it is water-based, meaning it's going to hit that water, reactivate, get all gooey and slimy, and then your project's pretty much ruined. We don't want that at all. Let's see here. Um, do you seal printable vinyl? This is an excellent question. You can seal printable vinyl if you want to. Uh, now, we don't really recommend putting printable vinyl on a vehicle or anything like that because, unfortunately, uh, the paper that you purchase for printable vinyl has to be absorbent so that it can absorb the ink from your printer. Now, some of them are marketed as uh, waterproof or water resistant. We actually have one that is water resistant and we love it. It is the HTV Ront brand. I can link it down below if you guys would like that. It's an amazing brand, but it does fade in the sun really quickly when put on a vehicle. However, if you're talking about normal everyday use you can if you want to seal those we don't feel like it makes a ton of difference however the sealer of choice would be a clear polyacrylic just be aware, be aware don't use too many coats of this because it does make your um paper look a little bit yellow if you use a ton of coats so one coat of that and you should be good to go if you want to seal it again 
Not 100% necessary, but if you do, we have done it in the past. We like to use that. Great question. Great question. Uh, let me see here. I use a paint roller. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Linda, how are you doing? How's everyone in Florida holding up? Definitely let us know. Oh, stickers. Yes, the, the paint roller I use is the two inch roller. Stacy, that's adorable. That's a little bitty roller. I'm sure that works great. Okay, I love HTV Ron. Savannah, us too. We love that brand of, I think it's printable sticker paper is what the title is, but it's printable vinyl and it's really good. It's a great quality. It's glossy. It's beautiful. We love it. Um, but you have to seal water slide stickers, right? Christina, excellent question. Yes, you do have to seal water slide uh, stickers or decals and the reason for that is because the water slide paper itself is super thin so all you're doing when you seal it is number one the very first coat all it's doing is locking in that uh, ink because it really once you put it in water that ink's going to start running everywhere but the second reason why you seal your water slide decals is because it adds thickness to the water slide decal paper it is super thin. If you were to just place the paper in there, I did do a video on this. I think it was the balloon win. So water slide balloons, water slide decals on balloons. If you can uh, search that in our channel, I think that was the video that I um, tested that on for you guys to see. But if you just place your water slide decal in water straight out of the printer, the ink runs everywhere and you can rip it so easy because the paper is super slimy and thin and flimsy. So uh, sealing it seals in that color so your ink doesn't run and each layer, which it's recommended like five to seven layers of spray adhesive, it builds that durability up of your paper and that is how you get some success when working with your water slide decals. Okay, for vehicle, vehicle printable stickers, I use a UV protective sheet. Yes, Maria, that is a must if you choose to use those types of stickers on your car. That's a must. Incredible, incredible. Okay, let's see. I want to make sure I'm hitting everything. Mod Podge is water-based. We talked about that. So these are great. I think the first thing I ever heard about Mod Podge is that you could use it to like pour over your... Uh, finished puzzles and it would like glue the puzzle together so that it wouldn't come apart. I think that's the first thing I ever heard about Mod Podge when I was a little bit younger and it does have a lot of really great uses but one of those uses is not to seal finished projects. It's just not. That's not what we're going to use Mod Podge for. Now we have the gloss and satin. They have matte. They have uh, dishwasher safe Mod Podge which by the way I do like dishwasher safe Mod Podge. Um, there's a lot of different types of Mod Podge. They have a lot of great uses. You don't want to seal something like this whenever you are um, going to be using it, rinsing it out, washing it, uh, if it's going to get rained on, anything like that, because it is water-based. Now, polycrylic and the uh, polyurethane spray, both of these are from Minwax. This one is clear satin, and this one is clear semi-gloss. Now, again, there's not a lot of difference between these. The finishes, they have a ton of different finishes. Um, both of these are relatively uh, inexpensive, and this one will, honest, honest to goodness, last us forever. I think we accidentally got this uh, and didn't know we got the huge can because we usually like the smaller can, so this is going to last us forever if you choose to get it. Um, I don't want to miss any questions here. Can you seal stickers with clear spray paint? So Monica, first of all, hello. I don't think I've seen you around here. Welcome to Oak and Lamb. Uh, you can if you want to. So we have, um, oh wait, I have to ask another question. Did you make the stickers? If you've purchased these stickers, they should be good to go. If you purchase them from an actual print shop or a print company that sends them to you like online, um, like sticker mule or something like that. That's who we use. They're already done. They're, they're good. You can put them on your car. They're going to do excellent. You do not have to seal them. If you created them, Miss Monica, you can seal them if you want to. It's not a must. Uh, we do not recommend putting ones that you make on your car or anything, unless like Miss Maria made an excellent point. You add like a UV um, film over those. They're for tumblers, Monica. You 
uh, do not have to seal that if you're putting them on tumblers and then sealing it with UV resin. If you're not sealing it with UV resin or AB part resin, you might want to add a coat or two of um, clear polyurethane, clear sealer, like you said, any kind of clear spray. That will help to lock that um, ink in. However, I just have to I just have to be honest and let you know. If you print and cut stickers that you make yourself and place it on, let's say, a stainless steel tumbler, and you don't seal it at all, and you just you know give it to your husband or you use it yourself, that water is going to kind of deteriorate that sticker pretty quickly. They're not made to hold up super well in water, um, but all that to say, if you wash it fast maybe you might have a little bit more success with it let's see um i saw a tutorial on how to make homemade mod podge linda homemade mod podge now i am very curious about that hey gail from texas hi gail okay so still talking about the polyacrylic and the polyurethane um these are great for outdoor projects. These are great for sealing uh, painted wood, things like that. This is good, of course, like I mentioned, for spraying your stickers and uh, that good stuff. However, one thing I want to note about both of these, they will yellow in the sun pretty quickly. Now, there's a lot of talk about AB part resin and UV resin yellowing over time as well. But when I say they yellow quick, these polyacrylic and the polyurethane spray yellows very quick, especially when out in the sun exposed to the elements. But again, that's not going to matter a whole lot if you're placing this on a wood board that's like natural wood color or a dark stained wood color, you're not going to see that it's yellowed. It actually might add to the look that you're going for. Uh, but that's something to note about the sealers. Again, they're good sealers. They have a lot of good uses, but we have to talk about the pros and cons of them all. So the pros of those are it's handy. It dries quick. Uh, you don't need a ton of coats to seal something well. The cons is it does yellow over time. Okay, thanks, that helped a lot. Of course, Monica, we're so glad we were able to help you. Let us know if you have any other questions. And I'll just let you guys know, again, if you're brand new here, we love newbies. We are not just here to inform you about sealing your vinyl projects. We also love to educate people on a ton of different things. We do a ton of Cricut. We do a lot of laser cutting. We do a lot of sublimation, sewing, home decor, woodworking, and more. I've dabbled in candle making and screen printing. You name it, we have done it. And we love to walk with you and make you guys more confident and well-rounded crafters. And if you're looking for a community where you can do that, look no further than Oak and Lamb. We do have an incredible collection of cut files, hundreds of cut files we're always adding to. We also have an exclusive Facebook group that is completely unmatched. The community there is amazing. We also have some other member only perks and free commercial use licensing on every single one of our cut files. So you can use them and use them to sell the projects that you make with our cut files. It's amazing. So I have dropped the link for that and pinned it. Let me know if you have any questions. You can get $35 off your first year with us here at Oak and Lamb with the coupon code 35 off 35 OFF. Really easy to remember. So click that link and join. We would love to welcome you as a member of our flock. Let me see. Good morning. I sanded a cutting board because I could not get the HTV to stick. Now I put polycrylic on it. Gonna try again this afternoon. Will it hold the HTV for decoration only? Judy. It's gonna be a trial and error. It's gonna be a trial and error. Uh, you're doing HTV on wood. It's so hard when I don't have the wood in my hand. HTV is incredibly finicky on wood if if I can't feel it, if I can't see it, if I'm buying something online or something like that, um, it's really hard to gauge if it's gonna if it's gonna work. Also, since you put some polyacrylic on it, that makes me a little bit nervous. However, all you can do is try. If it doesn't work, you can sand it down again and try again. I love that you've already had a a little bump in the road once and you've worked through it. You've overcome it. That's amazing, Judy. Um, do you have to use HTV? I have to ask that because if you have put polyacrylic on it and it's nice and slick and it's sealed, it will take uh, adhesive vinyl pretty well, I would, I would guess. Um, let me know. I would love to help. 
What is the best UV protectant sheet for car stickers? Christina, I want Maria to answer that. Or guard. Okay, yes, Maria, we have or guard as well. Um, it's just like a clear transfer sheet. So you'll just place it over your stickers. We use it after we print them before we cut them and just add more pressure when cutting. That way it just kind of cuts through perfectly like that. That's how we use them. Um, thank you, Maria. Uh, Monica, absolutely. We're so happy that you're here. So happy that you're here. Okay, now let's talk about resins. Resins are incredible for sealing. They're amazing. They make sealing a breeze for whatever type of project that you have. Not only are they easy to use, uh, but they are incredibly, incredibly clear. If you do it really well, you can have basically no bubbles at all. So it just looks crystal clear. Uh, the UV resin is gonna cure quickly as well. And it's the most permanent way to seal anything, honestly, except for, you know, crazy, crazy things that like construction people use and all that kind of stuff. But for us crafters, UV resin and AB part resin are incredibly great options for sealing almost anything. It'll have its limitations for sure, but it's a great way to seal lots and lots of things. Um, let me see. Yeah, resins are good. Ask all the questions that you have about resins. Again, I have uh, our UV resin and AV part resin. Our favorite UV resin is from J Diction. It's incredible. It does an amazing job. Uh, I did do a video head to head with three different resin brands and this one did come out on top. Less bubbles, crystal clear. It wasn't uh, yellowy. One of them was like almost completely yellow. I was shocked. Um, and then this is our favorite AB part resin. It's amazing clear cast. I have used this for years and years and years. Um, AB part resin is my bread and butter. This is what I use um, if I get the chance. I do, I love it. Now I have been using UV resin a lot more just because of the convenience of it. Honestly, you don't have to measure anything out. You don't have to worry about um, letting things cure for 12 to 24 hours. UV resin is no doubt more handy. Um, it is more expensive. However, it is worth it. If you're in the market for a good UV resin, grab this one. I have it linked down below. It's an amazing resin. Okay, do you spray yours with alcohol to help pop the bubble? Savannah, yes, girl, we spray it with alcohol. You can also get a little blowtorch or a lighter and kind of hover it over there and it will pop the bubbles. But alcohol works in a snap. Honestly, it's great. We, we use both whatever we're feeling, but definitely you need to do something to pop those bubbles. What do you think about painting on some UV resins super thin for car decals? Hang on. Lorraine, what do you think about painting on UV resin super thin for car decals? Do you mean like you're, paint, you're painting the UV resin on a decal and then putting that decal on your car, you're gonna have to, James, did you, did you read that the same way? I mean, I read it like she's painting it on and then putting it on the car. She's painting the UV resin on her car? No, on the sticker and then putting it on her car. Okay, yes, that's how I read it. So Lorraine, let me know if you have, it's so early, maybe I'm reading that wrong. It's not you, it's probably me. <laughs> it's probably me. Okay. Yes. Oh gosh, Lorraine. I don't know if that would do very much, just to be honest with you. Plus it would kind of harden, harden. So if you did it like in here and added UV uh, light to that and hardened it, then if your bumper or your window or something was like curved or anything like that, you would crack that resin once you tried to apply the sticker to the curvature of your car. Um, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Not saying it's a horrible idea, because it's not. I, I like your thinking. I mean, all you can do is try, honestly. If you want to use a tiny bit of UV resin and a brush and then a print and cut sticker, you know, you can. Rocky Top Hearts, you're in luck. Because we're not making an actual project today. We're talking all things sealing your projects. Now, we have pre-sealed or well, not pre-sealed, but I guess pre-added sealer too. Some wine glasses that we're gonna be showing you and that is gonna be like a little visual aid on why you should not seal anything that's like glass or mirror or see-through or clear, anything like that. Uh, but no, you didn't miss anything. Just ask questions. This is a great life for all of you guys to ask your questions. 
Uh, so, yes, J. Dixon's our favorite UV resin. Our favorite AB part resin is Amazing Clear Cast. You might say, why would you need two different types of resins, Rachel? Well, while we do love J. Dixon being a UV resin, it is expensive. So, when we're doing any larger projects, like if someone was going to do one of those... It looks like a creek bed or like a river table or something like that. Or if you're wanting to seal the ta a tabletop, if you're wanting to make a big resin, uh, who knows? You're going to want to use AV part resin because it's cheaper for more and it's going to it's gonna work a little bit better for you in regards to projects that are that large or complicated. Let me see. What about the soft cure UV resin for the car decal? Stacy? that would work because it wouldn't, of course, harden up. Um... But again, I've just got to be honest, I don't know if you, I don't know if that would be something that would make a huge difference as far as the durability of the sticker. That's a tricky one. Because if you don't continue the UV resin all the way around the sticker and the sticker edge, then water could still get underneath that. And I don't know. I don't know. It's something to try for sure. Uh, what do you recommend to seal acrylic blanks with when are you making baby, when you are making baby milestones or Christmas ornaments? UV resin. That's a great question. Uh, Becca actually made 100. You heard that correctly. She made 100 keychains for a really good crafty friend of ours and she sealed all of their acrylic. So she cut the acrylic out with the Glowforge. It was clear acrylic. She cut it out with the Glowforge. I think she also used some like confetti looking acrylic. That's besides the point. And she placed a print and cut vinyl sticker on there and sealed every single one of them edge to edge with UV resin. She said it worked fantastic. She could do like 20 at a time, lay them out in the sun for three minutes. Boom, they're perfect. So if you're making things like that, use UV resin. It's awesome. If you're making something humongous, do AB part resin, but really anything a reasonable size, use UV. You will be addicted to UV resin. You'll be addicted. Okay. I think I got them. I think I got them. I don't want to miss any. Okay. Let's see. Resins are great. We love resins. Um, now let's talk about some things that you can do since I don't truly recommend sealing things like drinking glasses um, and all that good stuff. Some things you can do to make your vinyl decals last a long time without sealing them. You can do two things. Number one, use a really good quality vinyl. Don't use Dollar Tree vinyl. Don't use Cricut brand vinyl. Don't use, I don't know, vinyl that's been sitting in your basement and it's starting to mildew or it's been like at 80 degrees for a while through the summer. Don't use vinyl like that. Use a really good brand of vinyl. Uh, Orcal 651 is a great brand. We use Starcraft uh, HD. It's a premium vinyl. It's exceptional. It works amazing. Uh, also, if you're brand new here, a little news flash for you is that there is no such thing as permanent vinyl. Even if vinyl is marketed as permanent, all that's going to mean is that the adhesive used to create the decal is just a little bit more heavy duty than the uh, adhesive used to create other types of vinyl. It doesn't mean that it's going to stick to to something and you're never going to be able to get it off. I have gotten permanent vinyl off of my car, off of glasses, off of wood, I mean, off of my laptop. I've gotten a permanent vinyl off of everything that I've tried and not had to work that hard. Uh, that being said, just don't let certain brands uh, gimmick you into thinking you have to get like more expensive vinyl. Just get a really good brand. Like I said, Orcal 651 is a good brand. Starcraft's a great brand of vinyl. Um, Crystal, good morning. Baby Charlie is with my mom. Thank goodness she's babysitting today. Uh, but I think he'll be here tomorrow and Wednesday for the member only live. So James will definitely be on his toes those days, being a producer and a dad all at one all at one time. Um, but yes, good brand of vinyl is going to make all the difference. Again, like I mentioned earlier, whenever you're placing something on something you're going to be drinking without sealing it, you're just going to place it like on a, a wine glass like this. Make sure that the decal or the uh, letters or whatever you're placing on there is not too thin because you want plenty of adhesive to be able to stick to this. Now, speaking, speaking of adhesive sticking to this, what is my number one rule when working with adhesive vinyl on any surface that is slick? Cleaning it. 
cleaning it. I want to say it with me. Clean it. You guys know. You're going to need your alcohol. I think I put it in the drawer. Rubbing alcohol. Make sure you can put your hand inside the glass. Spray it with rubbing alcohol or, you know, wipe it down. And that is going to take all of the dust, dirt, oil from your fingertips, little pieces of crap that's been stuck on. It's going to take all of that off of your wine glass and make that super slick, super clean, and allow that to really adhere with that adhesive of your vinyl exceptionally well. That's going to be great. Okay. Does UV resin yellow <clears throat> over time? Excuse me. So honestly, we're going to be completely transparent here. We haven't noticed it yellowing over time at all. We haven't noticed. If it did, we would tell you. We're not tied to any brand. We're not paid to say anything about any of these products um, if we don't like them. For this J Diction especially, I can't speak for other brands because we have had brands that I have yellowed as soon as I have taken the UV light off of them. I had a little resin comparison video. But uh, this J Diction, we have not noticed it. I've had a keychain on my key ring uh, that I've been using for six months now. It hasn't yellowed at all. Um, we have stuff all around this office. We use uh, cups and tumblers and mugs all the time that have this UV resin on them. Me and Becca take them home and no, they do not yellow. They don't yellow at all. So just letting you guys know, that's, that's what we know. That's what we know. Good question though, good question. Okay, <clears throat> clean your items well. Use a good quality vinyl, you know how important that is, honestly. Now, uh, let's talk about brushes and rollers and things like that. If you want to use a roller on like signs or whatever, that's a great uh, that's a great option for you. If we're talking about um, brushes, you want to use a really, really smooth, really soft brush to brush on any of these sealers. You don't want to use a brush like this. You don't want to use like a cheap adhesive brush. You want to use a really nice brush. These brushes are our favorite, James, if you don't care to go to the overhead camera. Let me move some stuff around. These are our favorite brushes. We get these on Amazon. We can also find them at Hobby Lobby. They're super, super soft. You can get them in packs of two or you can get them in packs with like smaller brushes. So we, we love these. These are some of our favorites. And then these are the brushes that are per perfect examples on what not to use when you're sealing. Now these are both great for certain things. This is great for adding adhesive to uh, wood or what have you. This is an actual adhesive brush. It's a disposable adhesive brush. That's why it's made so cheaply. Um, and then this is good for some quick painting projects and things like that. But this is a nice, smooth, soft, flat brush that you're gonna wanna use to spread your um, sealer. Now I use this smooth flat brush and here is a wine glass. I didn't clean this one, but it's clear. It's um, perfectly clear. You can see, and this is the one that I have um, sealed. I wanted to show you how sealing it with a smooth brush can actually make a world of difference here. However, if you're in person and you're feeling this, you still don't want to be, you don't want to be sealing your wine glasses. Trust me. Mostly because, again, this is water-based. Uh, but I wanted like a little visual representation just to show you guys that um, using a nice soft brush, you all you almost can't even tell the difference on camera especially. Now, in person, I can see <clears throat> a couple of brush strokes. But if I were to get this brush and dip it and try and make that smooth, you would see so many lines. It would be globbed up everywhere. It would not look very good. But you can see kind of that line right there. This is not sealed and that is sealed. I got these wine glasses at the Dollar Tree earlier today and they are just, look at that, just wobbling around. Anywho, okay, so use a good paintbrush. That is gonna make all the difference whenever you're sealing. Again, if I sprayed this with water, it would just gum up and come right off. So that's not what we wanna do. That was just for visualization there. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Um, I use the spray sealer and it works well for me. Nikki, uh, what do you use it on? We're glad that it works for you. Uh, the problem that I have with spray sealer on things like this is number one, you can't get a good even uh, coat of it. It's really hard to do that. Uh, number two, it chips off. Um, if you're using on something like a drinking glass or something like that. Also, you have to take into account, James, if you don't care to switch back. 
you have to take into account uh, what is considered food safe. Most clear sealers are considered food safe and dishwasher safe after a period of, usually it's like 28 days or 30 days of like setup time. <clears throat> setup time is different than cure time. If you wanted to take, let's just say a tumbler and put UV resin on them or AB part resin, it says after like 28 days, then you can put it in the dishwasher or then it's FDA approved to be food safe. So definitely do your research on whatever you're using. Moral of the story though, if you're using a sealer and it works for you, I'm so stinking glad. I'm so glad that it works for you. If you use a sealer and it doesn't work for you, maybe try a different brand. Maybe don't seal at all. Maybe change up your brush. Maybe just use better vinyl then you won't have to seal. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, can you use the colored molds with UV resin if you cure outside Charlotte? This is an exceptional question. Great asking all these great questions. Uh, the answer I should give you is no. You do need the clear or, they're not technically clear, but you know, like whitish clear uh, silicone molds, even if you are curing outside because UV um, rays need to be able to get through the sides of that into the bottom of that. And it can't do that nearly as easily if you have your molds that are colored and not clear. Now, that being said, if you're using a super thin amount of resin, it should be fine in a colored mold. If you're using a thick amount of resin that has glitter or pigment in it, and it's already gonna be harder for those UV rays to penetrate that resin, it would not be a good idea to use a colored resin mold. You'd rather use a clear mold. So it kind of, I'm going to say as general answers your question, no, don't use a colored mold. However, again, there are those little, those little areas where you totally could use one if you were doing like a really thin layer and things like that. That's a great question though. Uh, Nikki, I don't use it on mugs or drinking glasses. Okay, yeah, that's great. That's great, yes. So if you don't use it on mugs or drinking glasses, spray polyurethane, again, it's a good option. It's a good option for sure. Okay, guys, let me know if you have any more questions. <sighs> Without Becca here, having to talk 24-7 is hard. James is being quiet today. So I feel like I'm talking for six people. I don't know what I would even say. That's why I'm being quiet. <laughs> <clears throat> it's harder. It's harder to fill all the empty space talking if you're a, if you're the only one talking. Okay. Ask any questions you have. Ask any questions. I love these questions. You guys have done a great job asking them. Um, we're going live tomorrow at 10:30 a.m. Eastern, talking about the Walmart Dollar Shop. Uh, Walmart Dollar Shop has become like a recently new type of thing and it's actually it's actually pretty nice I perused it the other day and was was pretty impressed now I do have to say I wish it was a, a bit more evergreen uh, but just like target dollar spots they are very seasonal so right now it's going to be mostly fall and Halloween stuff that's there at that dollar spot that I'll be sharing with you tomorrow However, it's just going to show you some different types of items they have there, some craft blanks, or just fun things that I found so that you guys can be inspired. So that's going to be tomorrow at 10 30 a.m. Eastern here on YouTube for the public to see. And then Wednesday, me and James are doing a member only video, uh, making a super fun Halloween, a Halloween project. Uh, Walmart has a dollar spot, Gail, Stacy. Yes. So it's not in every Walmart. I wish it was. I think they're implementing them to go into all the Walmarts. But if you go on tomorrow's video and you look at the thumbnail that Becca made, if you click on that, the Walmart has a dollar shop. It looks very similar to Target's dollar spot. It has little knickknacks and home decor and things like that for a pretty cheap price. Um, yeah, so you'll have to you'll have to check it out. Okay, let me see here. Where is Becca, Stacy? Becca is in Waco, Texas, having a little uh, girls trip with Anna and Miss Julie. We hope that she's having a great time, but she's fine. The kids are fine. Nothing like that. Uh, come on, James, talk to Rachel. That's what I'm saying. 
I don't know what he would I mean, say. I either. talk to her all the time, but I can't talk to her <laughs> about what she does. I have I have no knowledge of anything really. I should honestly, guys, why don't I just get him up here and craft? Why don't I just make him craft? Maybe I'll make him craft on Wednesday. He didn't shoot me a look like he hates me, so maybe I will. He's shaking his head. He's like, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> what? I ain't making nothing. I ain't making nothing. Um, did they fly? Yes, they flew. They flew. They had a layover in Dallas, Atlanta. I'm great. I listen so well. I'm such a good friend. Sorry, Becca. Uh, I'm going to be stealing some outdoor signs and am petrified of turning them yellow. Which brushable would you prefer? I probably missed this because I was late. Megan, that is fine. Don't even worry about it. Totally fine. I would recommend Minwax Polycrylic. Uh, I wouldn't worry about your outdoor signs yellowing too bad. It, it will yellow. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's not going to yellow. It will yellow. But you're most likely not going to notice. Just saying. I'm going to walk over and grab my... Actually, James, can you hand me my uh, laptop charger? My Mac's on 10% battery. Sad. Yes, make him craft. Yes, James, you can do it. That would be hilarious. Too bad. <laughs> he said, too bad. James, it would be like the opportune time. You don't want to craft? No. <laughs> uh, he might not get a choice. Yeah, he just... He, I would be by myself? Yep. James! What if it's member only, just for the ladies and gentlemen that, like on the Facebook group? I'll be sick Wednesday. Oh, he's going to be sick. He's going to be sick. That's rude. The yellow will be noticeable if you have white vinyl slash HTV. Stacy, that's a great point as well. Yes, for sure. If you have anything white, that yellow is going to jump right out. Um... I'm sad that Target changed to seasonal only. Gail, I, I'm a little bitter about it too. I used to go not very often to Target. So when I went, I wanted things that were a bit more evergreen and not super, super seasonal. Uh, and they did change their Target dollar spot to very seasonal. But now Walmart's dollar shop is pretty seasonal as well, along with some other items that I think are there year round. But we're going to dive into some of that tomorrow. And maybe you can check and see if your local Walmart has a dollar shop. Okay, let's see. Is baby Charlie in the house? Diana, he's with my mom. She offered to come and watch him while we uh, went live today. Tammy, how is James doing since his surgery? I got on late, so hopefully that isn't a repeat question. Tammy, you're the first one to ask about it. Uh, thank you for asking. I will let James speak for himself. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, my voice is basically back to normal. feels weird not having tonsils just because... It's weird, like whenever you're eating food with tonsils and then you get them out and then you eat food, your, your throat just feels He's weird. He's tried to describe it to it. me, but it's like I still have mine and they've never bothered me like James bothered his. So I have no idea how to level with them. I'm like, I don't, I don't notice my tonsils in my throat. I don't know. But he always did. He always did. Me and Charlie are watching. Oh, gosh. I don't know why it makes me nervous. Oh, yeah, your mom's in here. Hi, Mama. <gasps> Mia and Charlie are watching. Oh, yes, Mom. Mom is called Mia. She's not Grandma. She's not Mima. She's not Grammy. She's not g -mal. She's Mia. And I think it's adorable. So her name is Mia. It fits her. If you, if you saw her, it fits her perfect. Which a couple of you met her at Camping with the Flock. She's popped in. I've used the polycrylic on the glass to sublimate on. Yes, Diana, you can sublimate on glass with polycrylic. That is a really fun hack. Uh, don't pr forget to press the like button. Charlotte, please do. That's great. Super sweet of you. Megan said, so we're experiencing a date between you two. You are Megan. We're on a date right I now. I guess you can call it that. We're on a date with 70 other people. <laughs> um... Only someone with very large tonsils would fill them while eating. <clears throat> yeah, James well, was... Mine was pretty big, and the surgeon that took him out said they're some of the worst he's ever seen. So. Yeah, that's... that's Gail, Grandma Gail, she's Gigi. That's cute. That's cute. Well, guys, I'm, 
I'm done. Are you done? Ask some questions. I've, I've went through all my notes. I've went through my examples. I've talked to you. I hope that now you have a little bit more of a, an understanding on what you can seal, what you should seal. Honestly, we don't seal a lot anymore in, unless it's like outdoor signs or things like that. Now, again, that does not count um, tumblers, like stainless steel tumblers, because we do seal all of those with um, UV resin. I had mine removed when I was four years old. I was so sick until they removed them. The doctor said he went to remove them and they fell out. Diana. That's just weird. That is horrible. Did the scabs fall off? Yes, I'm pretty sure all the scabs are gone now. Oh, I would say so. I'm glad I didn't notice them because the doctor made it seem like James would really notice when those scabs came out and that really grossed me out. So I'm very glad that he didn't notice when they came out. Ugh. Mom, if you're still watching, text me what you want to eat because we're about to leave and go get Chick-fil-A and I need to know what I need to bring you. Uh, here's me searching for Oregard and only finding Oracal clear. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Christina, I've got it. Let me link it for you. James, sing or something. Just fill the air. I'd rather not. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I have the link. Why do I have to make these titles so complicated? Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to help our friend out. <gasps> Oregard, here we go. Found it. Here you go, Christina. There you go. Yay, got it. Okay, so glad James healed and is eating fine. That surgery is hard on adults. Linda, <gasps> I, know. I know. He took it like an absolute champ, honestly. I think he was suffering in silence in his inner self. I didn't do much sleeping. didn't do he much eating. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat. He was so weak and his like head was hurting because he was so hungry and he was in pain. Some days my throat would hurt worse than others. It was so sad. Um, Megan, oh man, can't be late again. What is Oregard? Megan, you know what Oregard is. You know. You know. You're an OG around here. It's that laminating UV film that you can put over uh, printable vinyl to give it, uh, to seal it and make it a little bit protected from the sun. We've done some videos on it. You would know if you saw it, you would know exactly what it is, but you know what it is, Megan. Um, he is lucky he didn't notice them falling off. That makes it, yeah, yeah. Ugh. I knew they had come. Did you already tell us how your anniversary was? Yeah, it was simple. We didn't do much. No. We went and got, like, this place called Akita. No. It's our no. favorite Japanese place. No, we oh, didn't. I tried to, and they ended up being closed for maintenance. Yeah, yes. That was nice. Yes. We, I, we, we were got home. the next day. We were home with the baby. <clears throat> and I said, I really want Akita. And James said, I'm going. So James went to go get it. He calls me, and he says, you're not going to believe this. It's closed for maintenance. I'm like, you're absolutely kidding me. Megan said, oh, my word, what a Monday. I need to just go to bed. Megan. <laughs> um, 143 Vinyl also has one, but I've not tried it yet. Maria, we have not tried it either. I mean, again, usually if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. I wonder if you could put that over printable magnets to make them stay longer outside. Rocky Top Hearts, I would say yes. I would say you definitely could do that. Oh, show. Um, Mom sent me a selfie with her and Charlie. That's so funny. Charlie looks sleepy. Sleepy. Anywho. I mean to take this fat head of him home so we can look at it. No, morning. I use that fat head to ask Becca questions. I raise it oh, well, in my funny. hand. That's what, <laughs> that's what I use it for. Um, we had Subway for our anniversary right after our son was born. Lorraine, I had Subway right all. after Charlie was born. Yeah, you did. It was that was four. like the only thing open. It was four in the morning. Yep. James went down to go get Subway while it was open. His 
beats me. And the worker went, went on a 15-minute break. While and, I was standing there waiting. And James just stood there and waited the whole time. Right after we got married, we went to Taco Bell. Remember? Yeah. I was in my dress. He was in his tux. And we whipped up to the Taco Bell drive-thru and got Taco Bell. And right after I had Charlie, we got Subway. And I don't even... I have to be in a very specific... Is it even like this? I have to be in a super specific mood if I want... Subway. I don't have to be in a mood. I, can I like I like sandwiches, but I have to be in a specific mood. Also, has anyone's Subway order not changed since they were in like eighth grade? Because I never change my Subway order. It's always the same. I get different things. James does get different things. I do not. Not from Subway. Not from Subway. Oh. Well, guys, this was fun. Let me know if you have any more questions. Again, we're going to be back tomorrow, 1030 a.m., on here, on YouTube. Don't miss it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can get notified when we go live. If you're not already a member of Oak and Lamb, you're missing out. We got a lot of fun stuff going on here on the membership. A lot of stuff in the works to launch this year. A lot of things that will um, help you become a better crafter and just find a community that love you and want to lift you up all the time. Yeah, no no one ever changes it. Rocket Top Hearts, they didn't have Subway when I was in eighth grade. Oh. <laughs> Subway, what? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I always get the same sub. Everyone always gets the same sub. Miss Gail, yes, 1030 Eastern Time. Thanks for asking. Sorry, I usually clarify that when I say it. But uh, especially for all of our friends here that are watching today that... Um, joined in from different time zones. I should have said Eastern time. Bye, Charlotte. We had Jack in the Box drive through in my wedding dress and my hubby in his tux after our wedding. I, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Taco Bell is one of my favorite, my favorite things ever. I got a Crunchwrap Supreme. I don't remember what I got. <laughs> that was also Skinny Rachel only getting one item at no, Taco that's Bell. that's true, yeah. I do not get one item at Taco Bell. I can't. I can't. I think I only got one item. Yeah. Um, I've never been to Jack in the Box. Is that like crystals? Is that right? Jack in the Box is kind of like a crystal or a white castle. I think Jack in the Box. I have no idea. It's like a West Coast thing or North thing. It's not down here. Oh. No, I know it's not down here. I just I think it's kind of like crystals or well, see, we don't, don't have, have white castle here either. If it's not if you don't have crystals, you have white castle. So I don't think Jack in the Box is like. Either of those. I think it's just like a burger joint, like kind of like Cookout is here. Mm, maybe. Love me some Taco Bell. Lorraine, me too. I could eat Taco Bell all the time. All the time. <laughs> James will say, okay, I'm coming home. Or, okay, I'm going to stop and grab us some food real quick. What do you want? And then he'll type back and say, not Taco Bell. Did you order the same thing at Taco Bell too? Christina, well, you know, Taco Bell, every single item on the menu tastes exactly the same. <laughs> No hate on that either. No hate. But usually, usually, I will get different things. I love the beefy five-lay burrito. I love the chicken quesadilla. The uh, beefy milk burrito on the value menu is just chef's kiss. Um, crunch wraps are really good. The Doritos Locos Tacos, come on now. Those are delicious. My favorite thing is the chicken chipotle melts. I don't like the chipotle sauce. I don't is like it that sauce. Is it because it's too hot for you? No, because I douse myself in fire sauce. It's not well, too hot. Well, the sauce tastes great to me. I don't know what's wrong with you. Mm. It's like a Burger King. Savannah, okay. Yeah. You don't have Jack in the Box. It's like a burger place. They have some great tacos. Too. Jack in the Box has tacos? A burrito supreme only. Oh, yeah. I tried their Mexican pizza. I'd never had it. Like, even back in the day when they had it, I'd never had it. <clears throat> It was fine. I don't think I'll order it again, mostly because it was like three dollars. And I feel like that's expensive for one item at Taco Bell, personally. I love the Taco Supremes. I've ordered the five layer burrito without the shell and they put it in a bowl. Huh. Can't stand the Doritos tacos. Oh, Stacy. I love the Doritos tacos. They're so good. I like soft shell better myself because I put nacho cheese in the soft shell taco. I love fire sauce. I love fire sauce. Um, 
James and I actually, when we were dating, we would go to Taco Bell and we would always get fire sauce. And you know, they have like little things written on them, on every sauce. So if you get um, hot sauce, mild, uh, Diablo, fire, they all have different things written on them. Well, fire sauce specifically has one packet in the series and it says, marry me. And <laughs> when we were just dating, we would both when we were eating Taco Bell together, we'd find the packets and throw them at each other. Like literally, I would just hit James in the head with the fire sauce packet that said, marry me. And he would do the same thing with me. And we've kept them for years, kept them. So we have a little collection of fire sauces with little dates on the back that we've written in like a Sharpie pen. Uh, just, just cause, I mean, it's the dumbest thing ever. That but... was back when she loved me a little more. <laughs> oh my God, sure. Sure, but now whenever we eat Taco Bell and we find them, we'll keep them to ourselves and then like put them places where the other one can see it and find it. But again, it's the little things, guys. It's the little things in your relationship. Um, not saying theirs is perfect, not saying that at all, but saying the little things that you used to do. Never quit dating is what I'll say. And a lot of you have been married decades longer than I have, and I'm sure you could agree, but just never quit dating your spouse. It's important. We forget to a lot, but okay. I'll let you all go. We started talking about uh, a therapy session and marriage and ceiling vinyl and lunch. Now I'm even more hungry and really wanting Taco Bell. James is going to say no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I love talking about sealers. I love talking about sealers. Um, if you all have any more questions after this video, if you're watching, if you made it this far, first of all, thanks. Uh, link down below. We would love to answer those questions that you comment down below. Also, you'll notice we already have our one year anniversary celebration live scheduled. It's on the schedule on our homepage here on YouTube. Definitely make sure that you click and ring that bell to get notified about that one so you do not forget it. It is on October 18th at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to be crafting. There's going to be lots of laughs. We're going to be eating and chilling out and just being so grateful and thankful to you guys. It's really a celebration for you all, honestly. And also, that's the day that we're going to be premiering our blooper video of the year. Now, it is quite something. There's there's a lot of bleeps in it. There's a lot of laughing. There's a lot of burping. Uh, it's it's really something. James walked in on me editing it one day and was like, oh my God, what are you editing? And I'm like, oh, it's a blooper video. What is it? He was grossed out. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm not spoiling it, but yeah, that one thing you were editing just... <laughs> It is what it is. You think we care? There's like a toilet flushing in the middle of it or something like that. There's nothing that we can do about it. It's us, and we're just thankful for you guys, so we hope that you all get a bunch of laughs about it. And while we're premiering it on that, like, anniversary live, we're also going to go ahead and premiere on YouTube by itself the very next morning. So you guys can watch it over and over and over if you want to. But go ahead. Be here tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and we would love to see you there. Thank you all for being here, and we'll see you tomorrow.